Hi, this is Chris with Launch Code, and uh, the next few videos are going to talk about how to create relationships between entities that you're storing in a database. Uh, in other words, how to use object relational mapping concepts to create one to many relationships. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually just a little bit of setup work. We're going to um, look at how we can uh, reduce some duplication in our code. And if you did the studio for the previous class, we walked you through this these steps, but I want to do it um, on a video as well, just to show you uh, exactly what we're doing and, and to kind of give some more explanation to the concepts. And so to motivate what we're going to be doing, I open up my event class as well as event category. And notice that at the top of these two classes, there's some shared fields or some, some uh, duplicated fields. Each one has an ID with generated value that's a private int ID field. So this is the, the, the case in the top of both of these classes. Similarly, um, if I go down a little bit farther, since we have an ID field, they both have a get ID method, and they're both going to have equals and hash code methods that are basically the same. They're checking the IDs against each other. So anything that, that involves IDs is basically duplicated across these two classes. So we want to reduce that duplication using inheritance. Okay, so I'm going to create a new class that I want um, each of uh, these two models, and, and in fact any model I create in the future, to inherit from that will contain the ID-related logic, since every single one of our entities, or every single one of our persistent classes, will have an ID that functions as a primary key, um, will we'll extend uh, this new uh, base class in every single case that we create an entity. So in our models package, let me right-click and select New Java Class. And I'm going to name this class for uh, reasons that will become more clear in a moment, Abstract Entity. Okay. And uh, within this class, what I'm going to do, I'll make some room here inside of the brackets. I'm going to go just basically copy-paste the duplicated uh, class members from one of my other classes. Let me go to the event class. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take out the ID and put that over an Abstract Entity. I'm going to go and find um, the getter. Notice we've got a few compiler errors, which shows us exactly where we're using that ID since it's no longer in the, in the file. Let me pull out the getter and put it over here. And then finally, let me go out and get these two methods, the equals and hash code methods. And I'll put those in here as well. Okay. And we have one little compiler error. Let's uh, we'll fix that in a moment. Um, the first thing I want to do though is I want to go back to event, and I want to uh, I want to have event extend abstract entity. Okay. And so now with these class members in the base class, uh, even though I removed them from, from event, event will still be able to to access those things. Uh, one other thing I want to do, notice some of these imports at the top are grayed out. So those are those are imports for objects that I'm not using anymore, or classes that I'm not using anymore. So I'm going to get rid of those. And I'm just going to use a keyboard shortcut here. Notice, uh, you probably noticed by now that anytime I use a keyboard shortcut, uh, it shows you what it is at the bottom of the screen. And this one um, is the organize imports uh, keyboard shortcut, which just takes out any unused imports from your class file. Okay, let's go back to abstract entity and clean this up, figure out what this compiler error is. So uh, the compiler error here, uh, if we hover over the, the red um, field there, ID, it's telling us that ID has private access in abstract entity. Um, and in other words, what it's saying is, notice that ID is um, is part of, as we just did, as we just set it up to be, uh, the abstract entity class, and it's private. This means that this field can only be used within this class, or can only be referenced directly within this class. However, down here, inside of my equals method, um, notice that this event object is of type event. So event cannot actually see the value of the ID field because it's private in the base class. Um, and in particular, this is just an artifact of, of copy and pasting. What's happening here is our equals method is going to cast the uh, input parameter to the type of the class that we're in. And since I copy pasted that, that type is just actually incorrect. So I need to change this type from ent uh, ent or event to abstract entity. And at the same time, I'm going to change the name of this variable so it's more appropriate. So I'm just going to change this to entity. Uh, easy way to do that, if you haven't used this feature before, is right-click. Um, and in the context menu, find refactor. And then you can go to rename. And this will notice that when I rename that, uh, that variable, it renames every single other place where that variable is used at the same time. So that's a quick, easy IntelliJ tip. 
Okay, so now our abstract entity class is basically done with one minor exception that we'll, we'll come back to this and do one small thing before we're finished. I do want to go back over to the event category class and, uh, and improve this one as well. So in order to reduce code duplication, we're going to just do the same thing we did back in event. We're going to delete the code that we put into the abstract entity class. Okay, so I deleted my ID and the getter and the equals and hash code method, and now I'm going to have this class extend abstract entity. And I'll also do a cleanup imports as well. Okay, so now basically we've, we've done some refactoring here. Remember refactoring is just changing or improving the code without changing behavior. Our two model classes that are persistent, they now work the exact same way, but there's less code duplication. And now it's going to be really easy for me to create a new model class in the future because I will be able to, uh, I will be able to just uh, extend abstract entity. Okay, so um, let's see, what do we want to do next? Okay, we need to go back to abstract entity and do uh, and just do a couple small little things. So one thing I want to do is, the reason I named this abstract is that I actually want it to be an abstract class. Let me go ahead and add the abstract keyword. Recall that an abstract class is a class that you can only use by extending it. In other words, I can't create an abstract entity object. Um, it's just it's just not allowed. And so uh, this the purpose of this class is not for me to create abstract entity objects. It's for me to collect some shared data and behavior that I can share across other classes. I don't actually ever want to instantiate this class. So I'm going to make it abstract just to enforce the rule that nobody gets to create an abstract entity object. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a persistence annotation here. And let's see, I'm going to put at mapped superclass. And what this does is it says that um, the fields in this class should be pushed down into the, uh, the tables for the objects that extend it. In other words, my abstract entity has an ID field here, and um, it's private, but I want this ID field to be stored in the table that goes with events in the case of events or event categories in the case of event categories. This is our primary key. We still want to keep this in those given tables, even though it's not specifically contained in our two model classes. So mapped superclass just says that we want to map these uh, fields down into uh, the extensions when we're putting the data into tables um, when we use our ORM system. And that is really it. Let's go ahead and start the application, just to make sure everything works. Um, okay, I'm on boot run, and I'll hit start. And uh, if all went well, then we'll notice really no changes, but our code will be vastly improved. Okay, there we go. We see the final message there that our coding events application has started up. Let's go to the browser and go to localhost 8080. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and create a category. And then, uh, I had some categories there actually. Let's go ahead and test creating an event. Um, let's call this uh, and just a reminder that we haven't um, refactored our code yet so that uh, our event categories are used on the events themselves. That's what we're going to do next. That's that's creating a relationship. Right now we're still using that enum to uh, to lay out which different types of events we can have. So this list should be expected to be different from the, the items we see in the all categories list. And that worked as well. So um, everything we've done uh, now continues to work even though we've refactored our code. So that's great. We're now set up to go and create some relationships between our persistent objects.